Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome everybody to our third series of oil and gas related webinars from Anderson Hauser. Uh, today we will discuss mass meter proving. This is a very important topic as most flow meters that uh, need proving are the gas registers of, uh, of plants, of course. The speaker today uh, is, uh, is Stanley Ford. Stanley works out of Dubai and he works for our flow division with its headquarters in Rhein, Switzerland. And this webinar will last roughly about 45 minutes, 30 minutes presentation and 50 minutes question and answer. Now in the oil and gas industry, it's very common to have a small safety moment before we start any activity. And today I would like to focus on COVID-19, of course. Uh, please wash your hands on a regular basis. Keep at least six feet, one and a half meters away from each other. Wear a mask, get vaccinated when you get the opportunity. I got my shot last week, so that's good and make sure you stay in good mental health as well. It's very important. My name is uh, Rob Vermeulen and I'm globally responsible for um, the development of oil and gas within Anderson Housing, and I reside on our campus in Greenwood, Indiana. Now, before I start introducing Anderson Hauser, Stanley, I, I need to ask you, are you related to uh, Ford, the cart manufacturer, or um, no relation at all? No relation. I really wish I was. I'd, I'd probably have a different job, I think. If I had a job. Oh, Harrison, you do, huh? So that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So, small introduction of Anderson Hauser. Anderson Hauser is a Swiss company. Uh, we are having our headquarters in Reinach in Switzerland, also where our flow division headquarters is as well. We are a very innovative uh, company. We have over 8,000 patents uh, on all kinds of uh, measurement technology, just not just on flow, but also level pressure, gas analysis, liquid analysis, temperature engineering, you name it. We have a turnover of roughly 2.6 billion euros, and we employ roughly about 14,300 employees, uh, own employees worldwide. So it's quite a big company. So with this, um, I'd like to uh, hand over to Stanley and um, uh, get the story on proving. Stanley, go ahead, man. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to uh, visit with us at this webinar. Uh, my name's Stanley Ford. Um, I've got about 20 plus years of custody transfer experience uh, in the industry. Uh, my primary role within ENH is a uh, business development manager for the oil and gas group at MPXS. Uh, my primary focus is working on custody and production metering systems, uh, marine fuel solutions, wellhead metering, and of course developing standardized and of course bespoke solutions for the oil and gas industry. Uh, so today we're going to talk about proving and master meter calibration and we'll start off with the basics. Uh, basically uh, when it comes to proving, uh, we, you have to you have to calibrate all types of meters. Now, typically those those meters are calibrated in the factory on water, and and when they're calibrated in the factory with water, it's 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 very stable process conditions. And those those process conditions we see in the lab are much different than what we see uh, in real site conditions. Um, so when the meter gets out on site, you've you've got a lot of of different um, variables that can come into play that'll affect the measurement uncertainty and repeatability. And, and those would include viscosity, density, temperature, vibration, um, et cetera. So basically all, all custody fiscal uh, metering systems have a, a, a desired uh, accuracy and repeatability target that they have to achieve in order to guarantee um, that they are in, in fact custody meters. And, and that has to be true for the entire life cycle of the, of the working meter. So basically, when it comes to proving, this, this consists of placing the duty meter in series with uh, uh, the various types of provers that are available, and then uh, having that prover then calibrate the meter in real time. Now, normally, a, a meter prover will have uh, some much higher and uh, better and better accuracy and repeatability than, than any type of duty meter. The typical proving systems that, that we normally would see in the industry would be open tank provers, small volume provers, or, or compact provers as they are named, known, and of course uh, pipe provers, and, and these come in either unidirectional uh, or bidirectional pipes. And of course, the, the topic for today, master meters. Um, 
So in this slide here, we're, we're basically showing you how we do our calibration in our flow lab uh, in Rheinock in Switzerland. And, and it's uh, basically showing the, the process that we go through in order to achieve the highest level of, of accuracy and uncertainty for a mass meter system. Um, so basically all, all meters, they, they would typically get calibrated on water and, and, uh, and then likely also uh, get a density calibration as well. We kind of take it a step further when it comes to a master meter. The first thing that's going to happen in the, in the factory is we're going to do a premium cal on, on water. And this is basically uh, a volumetric type of, of calibration. Uh, and then that's followed, in, and it's actually happening at the same time that we're doing a density calibration on our gravimetric system. Now, all of our systems in, in Roynock, Switzerland are accredited by the Swiss authorities, and they're regularly uh, tested and checked to make sure that they are up to snuff and uh, we're getting the highest level of accuracy and uncertainty. So basically once that meter is, has been calibrated now on, on water, uh, as well as getting its density calibration, we have sort of our base uh, meter factor and we've established what we want to see from a, a Reynolds number perspective. From there, we actually take the meter over to our hydrocarbon facility where we can uh, calibrate the meter on various different types of, of mineral spirits and oils that we have uh, on site, we actually have mineral oils to go all the way out to 300 sinistokes. And from there, we will we will calibrate the meter um, on, on various flow rates, but at a minimum, we'll, we'll do it on five different flow rates, but we can certainly do more depending on what the customer needs are. Uh, basically, as, as we are calibrating that meter, we're, we're actually doing meter factor linearization against the Reynolds number. And, and this basically will then achieve uh, an even higher level of, of accuracy and uncertainty within the meter. Now, of course, we do provide uh, the uncertainty calculation that would go along with that, but of course, we do work with uh, third-party verification companies such as NMI uh, in Europe, and, and they would basically offer a separate uncertainty calculation that could um, meet the customer's needs. Basically, once the, the master meter is uh, fully calibrated, uh, we will then uh, take it out. You can now take it out to site where it's, it, it can be used to, to calibrate uh, duty meters, and, and it can calibrate all types of, of liquid duty meters, including Coriolis meters, ultrasonic meters, uh, turbine meters, PD meters, basically, in, you know, any type of, of liquid meter that's that's going to have a similar uh, flow profile. And these would be, you know, any, any type of applications that you might see in, you know, rail car loading, ship loading, uh, truck loading, pipelines, uh, jetty systems, really anywhere you've got a custody transfer for meter system that's that's in the field. So basically what happens is we we take the the pulses, the pulse outputs from from the duty meter and we connect that into uh, the flow computer and and it's comparing the pulses that are being uh, sent out from the master meter. And what happens is is the flow computer does a, a side by side comparison in real time of the pulse counts that's going on between the duty meter and the master meter in real time. And then basically what happens is, is it'll generate a, a proof report that may have some type of correction that needs to be done on the duty meter or uh, will we'll, you know, return a result that the, the proof was accurate and the, the meter's good. The great thing about using master meters is, is that they don't have, require any, any special knowledge to use them, not and unlike a small volume prover or a bidirectional prover, which uh, you may have to have some very special valve alignments that you have to do, or uh, certainly there's there's a lot higher level of maintenance that's associated with a small volume prover or pipe prover versus a mass meter system. So here's uh, some photographs of our water calibration facility. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see them dropping in a, a meter that's just come from the factory where they're gonna be doing the calibration on it. Um, in the middle picture here, this is our gravimetric uh, calibration system where it's, it's actually uh, generating the density calibration. In the right-hand side, you can see uh, sort of a layout of, of how that all sort of comes together. Uh, basically, what happens is we're, we're flowing water through the, uh, a bank of master meters that we have within our flow lab, and, and then we compare our, the, the master meter in the flow lab with, with the meter that's going to be under test. Now, while that's happening, at the same time, we're also doing a, a density calibration with our gravimetric system. And you can see in the, in the middle picture there, those uh, silver 
uh, sort of cans, those are actually um, certified weights. Uh, they, they get tested and checked uh, on a regular basis. From there, uh, we move it over to our hydrocarbon calibration facility, and uh, we can prove on, on, we have two uh, small volume or compact provers that we, we prove our system on. Uh, the, the main unit uh, can flow anywhere from two cubic meters per hour all the way out to 1200 cubic meters per hour. And the smaller one can prove from two cubic meters out, uh, per hour all the way out to 800 cubic meters per hour. I mentioned before that we've got various uh, uh, mineral spirits on site. We've got uh, a product that goes from 15 cinestokes all the way out to 300 cinestokes. Our facility uh, supports all line sizes from DN50 all the way up through DN400 or two inch to 16 inch. Uh, we normally run the system between 20 and 40 C, which is uh, 68 to 104 F. And we've got a pressure of three bar or 43.5 PSI. When it comes to uncertainty, um, the, the primary uh, uncertainty for the small blind prover is at 0.05%. And then our bank of master meters uh, operates at 0.08%. And we have a uh, capability of, of calibrating meters in both mass and volume as per OIML R117 and MPMS uh, chapter 4.8. Um, we do uh, from time to time also send our meters out to third party facilities in order to get calibrated. So we can actually uh, send our meters out to various facilities uh, around Europe. Uh, here we're showing the facility in France at, at SPSE. Here we see uh, a master meter that we built for a customer in Singapore. Uh, that's getting calibrated on four different types of, of products that have much higher uh, viscosity than, than what we have in our flow lab. And the viscosities here are, are all the way out till fuel oil. Um, you can see here in the left-hand side of the picture, uh, this is uh, the unidirectional pipe prover that's at the facility at SPSC. It's a very, very large uh, system with a huge footprint. Um, it's, it's many, many meters long and uh, it's, it takes up quite a bit of space compared to the, the compact footprint that you see with the master meter on the right-hand side. So the results that we got from this particular system, just to give you an example of, of what an independent uh, certification declaration would look like, this is a, a declaration from NMI for that particular system that we calibrated with SPSC. And you can see that it was proved on four products, uh, water being one of them, and then three various levels of, of heavier products all the way out through fuel oil. And uh, this is all accredited and certified by NMI uh, through an independent third party facility at SPSC, which we uh, fully support um, throughout Europe, uh, depending on what, what the customer's needs are. And you can see what the linearity is for, for this particular meter that we uh, developed for our customer in Singapore. It's, it's really incredible results. And this is actually what you're looking for when it comes to a master meter. Uh, a master meter typically is gonna be about uh, three times uh, it, it, per OIML and also through API 4.5, it's, it's required to be three times better than a duty meter. So, so what does that mean in terms of uncertainty? Typically a duty meter would be zero, uh, would have an uncertainty of 0.2% whereas the master meter would be three times better and would have an uncertainty of 0.067%. So you can see that it's, it's much higher level of accuracy and uncertainty in the system. Um, so for us, whenever we develop and, and, and sell uh, master metering systems, uh, we, we you know, design the entire system and then um, put it out with a skid manufacturer. Uh, we've got various skid manufacturers in, in Europe as well as the United States. And uh, we'd, we'd basically uh, work with them to, to build the entire skid uh, through the certified suppliers. And that would include everything from the skid manufacturing, um, including the control system, the panel. Uh, and we offer this in, in various types of packages, uh, whether it's in a, an EX zone or whether it's in a control room or uh, IP66 type panel. Uh, we, we support uh, all the different formats that you could imagine for uh, control room type applications or, or in field applications. Uh, here's some, some examples of, of the software that we've developed for our master meter solution. Uh, this is a, a purpose-built uh, HMI package that we designed specifically for master meter systems. 
Um, and it's got all the standard stuff you'd expect from, from a typical SCADA package, but it's, it's very much uh, purpose built around uh, calibration uh, with our master meter system. Um, you know, it's got everything that, that you'd expect in terms of, of operating the system. And then of course, uh, generating the final report, which is obviously the most important piece to this. And then of course, you know, you'd have some historical trends as well as diagnostic uh, capabilities built into the system. Um, other deliverables that, that we would offer for, for our customers, uh, you know, that are looking to manufacture mass meter systems would be the, the full set of drawing packages, which would include the general arrangement drawings, PNID drawings, um, you know, full three-dimensional drawings that would be required to, to fabricate the skid locally um, or, you know, with, with a third party uh, provider. Uh, we'd also provide all of the manuals to, to operate the system as well as writing the standard operating procedures to properly do the proving for your duty meters and also maintenance and care for your uh, master meter. Of course, we provide any sort of additional wiring diagrams that may be required to, to wire the skid up to the control panel, and of course, the wiring diagrams for the panel itself. Additionally, we would provide all of the documentation for certification from you know, a third-party provider such as NMI. Um, we'd, help you out with the factory acceptance testing, uh, site acceptance testing, uh, commissioning documentation, and of course, any additional field verification that's associated with the system. Uh, just a comparison here on, on this particular slide, we're, we're looking at a, a proving method comparison with the Coriolis versus a small volume prover. And um, you, can, you can see that uh, on the left-hand side, you've got the Coriolis, on the right, you've got the small volume prover. Uh, typically, you know, most people associate Coriolis uh, meters with mass type uh, of operations, but they certainly can do volume, um, whereas a, vo uh, a small volume prover is typically, is typically uh, set up in, in volume type applications, whereas if they are going to do mass, it would be an inferred mass from, from a flow computer where it's making some type of calculation to achieve inferred mass. Uh, when it comes to the installation types, they both uh, can be uh, set up in either fixed uh, st static type positions or, of course, mounted mobily on, on trailers or trucks or um, maybe even some sort of like carts even. From an operations perspective, uh, the, the Coriolis master meter is, is much simpler and easier to, to own and operate. Um, it's got a very compact footprint, which allows for a very high installation, uh, a very easy installation. And of course, it's got a very high turndown ratio. Compared to a small volume prover, they're, they're typically uh, you know, bulky and, and, and larger in size compared to a mass meter. Um, you do need to have some special knowledge in order to, to own and operate one, as well as to take care of all the maintenance on it. And, and oftentimes what we've seen is that small volume provers do have some performance issues when it comes to the number of runs that's required to achieve um, a good flow rate and a good uh, meter factor. And of course, as, as you, the more you operate it, you're gonna have, a, of course, higher wear and tear on the system, which does uh, also increase your OPEX in terms of, of how you're maintaining the system. Um, when it comes to maintenance, uh, the, the Coriolis master meter, there's no moving parts. So there, there's no maintenance that's really associated with the master meter. The only maintenance that, that, that you'd be required to take care of would be the recalibration, um, sending it back to the factory or to a third party facility for recalibration. And that's really gonna depend on, on the country that you're located or you know, what the customer's uh, agreements are with their customers in terms of how their custody transfer agreements, uh, whatever they have in place. Uh, for a, a small volume prover, uh, the maintenance that you typically expect with them would be, you know, you have to do regular water draws on them. These are typically once a year. And then, of course, you'll have to do uh, maintenance where you do tear down and replace the seals on the pistons and then perhaps even uh, reconditioning on the cylinder body itself. When it comes to uncertainty, uh, a mass meter would be 0.06%, uh, whereas a small volume prover would be 0.02%. But when you look at the capex and opex comparison, it's it's really it's it's much cheaper uh, long term to to buy and own and operate a mass meter system. Here's a few examples of some installations that we've done uh, around the world. In the top left, this is a a mass meter uh, system built into a truck that's uh, responsible for calibrating uh, ship loading and pipeline systems 
<clears throat> this is uh, a system that we use in Turkey and, and Italy. Um, on the right, uh, we've got uh, a master meter here in, in series with a, a duty meter that's that's on a on a ship jetty that's responsible for, for ship loading um, directly onto the ship. And what's great about this is is you know they're they're right there in series in a static position, so uh, the, the site conditions uh, in terms of of how they're they're reading the temperature, pressure, and flow rate is is, is all in the same line. Uh, bottom left, uh, this is that again that system that we designed for Singapore. Uh, this is a mobile system um, on a it's fairly large. It's a 10 inch. It's on a on a skid that they move around with like a forklift. And this is designed to do calibration of bunker meters um, on bunker barges in Singapore. Uh, so they they move this around to various uh, jetties and, and ports to to do the calibration of the of the bunker barges. Um, on the right. We've got uh, an LPG master meter system. Um, I, I, in my opinion, I think uh, when it comes to Coriolis meters and LPG, it's, it's certainly the way to go compared to a small volume prover, especially you know due to the fact of, of the um, temperature and the pressure. Uh, I'm sorry, the temperature, pressure, and process conditions associated with with LPG, and of course LPG by itself and, and the lubricity of, of the product that's flowing through it. Uh, that tends to tear apart a small volume prover rather quickly. And um, of course, there are some questionable numbers when it comes to the temperature in, in a small volume prover. So that's that's it for me. Um, I'm happy to take your questions uh, and, and, and chat with you guys about uh, mass meter solutions and, and calibration and proving in general. Great. Well, thank you very much, Stanley. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think it was uh, very interesting for me to see also these pictures. We also have some uh, questions with regarding to these pictures as well. Uh, before we um, go to the questions, uh, let me point out that we have the handout on the right hand side if you go sure. to the meeting panel as well, um, that you can, uh, can download for your um, uh, convenience. And if you have further questions, um, just send us an email. I mean, our email addresses are pretty simple. It's uh, rob.vermulen at andres.com or uh, jenish.giwala at andres.com or stanley.ford at andres.com. So it's, uh, it's very simple. Or go to your local or regional contact person for that as well. So we have some questions, uh, Stanley, if that's okay with you. Sure. Yeah. So the first question I have was... Um, how are the flow rates compared when you do a calibration? Is that on pulse or for the 20 milliamp? Um, so, so we always we always look at pulses. It's it's always about pulses, um, and this gives us the, the highest level of accuracy um, when it, we're talking about accuracy and uncertainty. Um, so we look at pulses with the the master meter when it's being calibrated, and then the master meter looks at pulses with the duty meter. And and what they're doing is they're they're doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the pulses between the master meter and the duty meter. Okay. The next question is, um, can I use the same master meter for offloading diesel and crude? Yeah, certainly you, 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 can, you can use the master meter for um, any number of products, uh, you know, What's great about the Coriolis meter is, is we actually will calibrate it as, with the linearization with our range. So, you know, it's it's gonna see the, the difference in, in Reynolds and density between the two products and, and, and then correct for it internally as needed. Okay. Then I have another question from um, Martin and he is asking, um, um, you, when you refer to premium cal for the master meter, I presume it's high accuracy. Can you elaborate that a little bit better? Yeah, so this is, um, you know, this is typically going to be higher level of accuracy than you would expect for, for a duty meter. So, so we want to achieve, for the premium calibration, we want to achieve um, as good as the master meter bank. So we're going to, you know, push towards 0.08%. Um, uh uncertainty whereas if it's just a standard duty meter for uh oiml zero point uh, class 0 0.3 then 
then we would only be looking to achieve 0.2% uncertainty. Okay. Um, then I got a, a nice question from uh, Namir. Uh, what is the best way? This is a conscious question, Stanley. What is the best way to calibrate a Coriolis master meter? Okay. The best way to, to calibrate a Coriolis master meter. Um, I, I think that I think that the best way to do it is is with uh, different levels of, of hydrocarbon products, because because the Coriolis meter is is so dependent on on Reynolds number and and viscosity, and it's it's really important to to look at the Reynolds number and to do your linearization with the Reynolds number. I, I think personally that's probably more important than than you know meter factor and, and uncertainty of the meter factor. I think that if you have a higher level of of of, of accuracy in your Reynolds number, that actually uh, will ensure that your Coriolis meter can work with any type of product. Yeah, it's also the reason why we uh, invested in uh, this hydrocarbon calibration uh, system where we do calibrate with different viscosities uh, and different kinds of oil instead of just water and uh, correlated to oil because exactly for that reason this yeah. is also um, this is also a, a question of um, of uh, of gut i guess as well it's from uh, per uh, measuring accuracy which one is more accurate coriolis or a mag meter uh, oh coriolis <laughs> easily <laughs> coriolis is... I, I, I knew that one was coming <laughs> That, that's not even a question, really. Uh, you know, you're gonna get much higher accuracy. <laughs> you get very much higher accuracy with the Coriolis meter than you will a mag meter. Absolutely, yep. Then we have a, a question from uh, William. Uh, what kind of flow computer are you using with your skid? It's also an interesting one. Yeah, so um, we've we've designed and developed uh, our master meter solution for the the systems that we that we sell um, with the the nano flow computer. So we use the nano flow computer um, for all the master meter solutions that we sell from from Rhinox. Yeah, that's one of them. Yep. It's a very small, lightweight flow computer, and it's 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 purpose built. Uh, you know, and we've we've got some some intellectual property um, developed specifically for master metering within within the. The flow computer itself but i also know that uh, some other skits use some other fa uh, fabrication uh, flow computers as well it's often also depending on what the customer wants right oh yeah definitely you know i mean uh you know you can use a master meter solution with any flow computer you know um you know all the, the major flow computers support master meter proving uh by default whether it's a Spirit IT, a 600, Omni, you know, all, all the major flow computers uh, by default will have support for, for proving with master meter systems. Now we got a question from David. Uh, do the uncertainty figures on slide 13 relate to mass or volume? And are they different for mass and volume? Slide number 13. Um, Slide 13. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, the, the numbers that you will get for uncertainty would be uh, however you're doing your calibration. So, so you know, if you're going to, per API chapter 4.5 MPMS, you have to achieve uh, three times better than what the duty meter is. So if you're going to be looking at a volumetric meter, then you have to achieve the same level of uncertainty for a volumetric meter as you would for a mass type meter. So it's it's true for both. It's true that you would achieve uh, both levels of uncertainty for volume and for mass. Now that's that's not true for, for a small volume prover because uh, that would be what would be you know technically inferred mass. So there's still some type of additional uncertainty that would be applied to the total uncertainty because now you're adding a flow computer and other instruments into the total calculation. Yeah, absolutely. You infer it, huh? So that always adds normally uh, to the error. Definitely. Yeah, it always adds. Any instrument and adds. We have a question on slide 14. Uh, why is the master meter um, covered? 
So I think it's the uh, top right. Um, yeah, I think so that's what it relates to. You know, the yeah, it's got all the insulation on it. So so um, uh, so the first thing that happens before you do any type of proving is what we call a stability check, and and this is the reason why we do this is we want to make sure that the the process conditions between the duty meter and the master meter are are the closest to to equal. So that means temperature and pressure have to basically be. That's the first check that a, the flow computer does is it's checking pressure, temperature, and and if there's any variance that's that's outside of what the the parameters are, then it won't even allow for calibration to take place. <clears throat> so typically, what we do is is we want the mass meter to to be in this particular instance um, to be wrapped up so that it's it's actually not generating any additional heat and it would it would throw off the the process conditions between the duty meter and the master meter. It's just a way to sort of help it uh, maintain temperature as it's flowing through the system. Yeah, stability is important. Uh, stable conditions. Stable then conditions. I've got a question from, um, uh, from Martin. Um, have you ever used additives in the water rig to simulate different mediums close to the customer's medium? No, we, we don't put anything into the water rig itself. Um, <clears throat> And that's always just, you know, straight water. Uh, and that's the water that, that we use inside the system um, uh, is actually tested by the Swiss authorities to make sure that there's nothing in it. It has to be pure um, distilled water is what we have in the system. And then additionally, we can also calibrate on oil, right? Yeah, so, so you know, once we take it over to the, the hydrocarbon lab, then we've got the, the different levels of viscosity with um, the, the different products of, of mineral oil that we have on site. So we can go all the way out to, <clears throat> excuse me, to 300 Sinistokes um, viscosity with our hydrocarbon facility. Yeah, so it's water and then additional oil on request if needed. Yep. That's correct. So we have a question from uh, David as well. Do we have any experience with a trailer mounted battery powered rechargeable? Coriolis mm. proof, say three, four inch. I don't personally have any experience with that. I, I mean, do. I, I've got tons of experience. Yeah, I've, I've got tons of experience with doing them on, on trailers, but having them battery powered, that's that's not something I'm familiar with. I, um, I'm sure I it's, it's certainly them, doable. I know, and I've seen them as well. Uh, we've built a couple here in the US um, uh, for your knowledge as well, Stanley. And these are trailer mounted, solar powered, battery powered, uh, proving systems, uh, which we apply in the uh, oil and gas fields. Yeah, so we did. Now, this is a question from Ahmad. And Ahmad, what is the ideal period time to recalibrate the master meter? Oh, um, well, this is really more uh, a question of what the, the country that you're in or the customer uh, requirements are. Um, API MPMS 4.5 says that you should calibrate a mass meter every 12 months, um, but there's there's lots of operators and uh, oil companies that will allow for mass meters to be recalibrated every, up to every five years. Um, I know, you know, working with the KOC in Kuwait, uh, they, they typically follow a five-year cycle for recalibration on their master meters. Man, I have so much questions you don't want to know, uh, Stanley. It's amazing. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of people are uh, very involved, I can tell you that. It's, it's, um, a, it's a conversation starter. That's all we're looking for. It's apparently, yes. Um, Moisayed uh, had a question. In case of gas flow measurement, gas flow measurement. What are the limits of a Coriolis flow meter? Density and pressure. Um, well, it depends on it depends on the Coriolis meter. I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, for, uh, for regular operations or, or, or master meter operations, those are sort of two different questions because obviously you'll have a higher pressure drop through um, a check meter or mass meter in, in a gas uh, system. But, you know, again, if it comes back to um, 
the, the product, the pressure, and and uh, the type of or manufacturer of the Coriolis meter to really answer that. Then I got a question from Namia. What is better, a compact prover or a pie prover to calibrate a Coriolis master meter? Um, uh, it, 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 that's probably more dependent on, on the flow rate, I would say. Um, you, you know, certainly you're going to be able to, to get a lot larger flow rates out of a larger uh, pipe prover than you would a compact prover. Um, and you could probably achieve that in, in a shorter amount of time than you could with a small volume prover. Um, you know, I, I'm an old school guy uh, and, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the pipe prover myself. I'm a little bit old school as well, and um, I agree with you. This is a question from David. If we use a Coriolis meter to prove volume, do we use its onboard density meter or uh, function, or do we hook it up to a separate densitometer? Ah, this is an interesting one that we were just talking about last month with their metrology team. Um, yeah, so as per API 4.5, um, it says that uh, in order to do volume, you have to have a separate density measurement. It doesn't yep. say that you have to have a whole completely separate uh, instrument, just that you have to have a separate density measurement. So, so typically what we would do in, those, in, in that case is we would, we would take one output from, from the pro mass meter, which would be your, your flow rate, your volume, and we would take another output that would be density. So we've achieved the API 4.5 requirements of having a separate density measurement even though it's through the same instrument. So yeah, you would, you would use uh, two, two sets of, of outputs from, from the Coriolis, one being flow and the second being your density. And things are changing as well there as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it changes all the time with API. I mean, if you see what the Coriolis now can measure from a uh, density accuracy, it's amazing. Um, this is to a previous uh, question as well. This, this question is from Arden. Um, what's, uh, if you measure petrol and crude oil, does the Coriolis meter measure the density in order to make the correction, or does the meter have to be calibrated on the different mediums in order to configure the meter for the best accuracy? That's a very good question. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, it's it's going to have much higher accuracy with with the more um, products that it's, it's calibrated on. Um, you know, obviously uh, a meter that's been calibrated on, on hydrocarbon products is, is gonna be much more accurate than one that's just been done on water. Um, but if you've got a whole range of, of, of uh, hydrocarbon products, you know, with you know, a lot of different uh, viscosities, then the more uh, products that you can calibrate on, the more accurate you're gonna make the meter itself. Um, and, and really that, that kind of comes down to you know how you're looking at the the Reynolds number in terms of viscosity, and then applying that to the meter factor linearization. I fully agree. I mean, the Reynolds number has a big influence on the uh, on the performance at the at the end as well. And um, yeah, so you're fully right there. I think. So, okay. Well, I have some more questions, but um, we're getting close to the end as well. Um, do you have any last words, Stanley? Well, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks to everyone. Thanks so much for, for taking some time out of your day to, to spend some time with us, um, to uh, join this webinar and, and have a look at, at uh, Mass Meter Solutions. And of course, uh, we're, we're more than happy to support you guys however you need with, uh, with any additional questions that you have or need some, some more information. You know, please, uh, please feel free to, to send us a, an email or, or drop, drop them in here in the comments and, and we'll do our best to get back to you and hopefully uh, get you the information that you're look, looking for. So once again, uh, thanks so much for attending. We really appreciate it. Yeah, same uh, from me. I fully agree with you. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Um, it's a hot topic, so please keep in contact. If you have questions, um, we can learn from you, and hopefully you can learn from us a little bit, and uh, together we can come to the best possible solution for your application. So with this, uh, please uh, do not forget to uh, uh, download the handout if you are interested in having that as well. 
I wish you a great day. Please keep safe and healthy. And I hope to see you uh, next time with a new topic, same time. Thank you very much and have a great day.